Okay, so today's topic is on the move. And this has been probably a thread. <laughs> right? It's been a thread for the last couple of months. We've mentioned it quite a bit on the podcast. And it's because I'm moving in less than seven days. <laughs> so if you are watching the video, you might see a box behind me <laughs> that's being packed. Um, and so there's lots happening. There's lots of things that happen around the move, around a move, and you've been through some moving. And so it's kind of, it'll be a fun discussion. I think moving is, uh, yeah, it's good because it's refreshing. And I, I'm very curious to hear your input on it, Amy, because you're always professionally organizing people and you naturally think that way but now you're doing it for yourself, which you've done before, but what are, what are pros and cons? Is it refreshing? Is it a check the box, get it over with? I mean, inside input. I am very curious to the organized person, how this works out. I, to that point, I will say um, I am thoroughly enjoying this process okay. because we're downsizing to a smaller place. And so I have to be super intentional about what I take. Mm -hmm. And that, that has made me realize I am going to be in a space where I love almost everything in it. Yes. Because I can let stuff that I was just keeping because I had space for it. Or I needed something in that corner or, you know, you, you, there's so many things. So so as far as that, it's very, um, it feels really good. Uh, I will tell you though, it's harder on my husband. He's like last night he was working in his office trying to clean out. He's got tons of memorabilia and, you know, I'm making the decision, keep it, don't keep it. Then do I take it to the apartment or do I put it in storage or, you know, like there's like these whole right. series of questions he got as far as keep and don't keep. And then when he had this collection of key I'm like, okay, so is it going to the apartment or is it going to storage? And he was like, oh my gosh, I've got to think about that too. <laughs> so wow. that was actually, that's very overwhelming to him and me. I'm just like, chit, 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 chit. this is, you know, so my brain works a little bit different than his, but it's been, I have been, I'm enjoying it. Um, I will say the hardest part though, is leaving people. That is what I'm discovering. It's a very bittersweet um, I've had to say goodbye to clients and I, I'm just like, did you do this? Like, I'm going to come back. Like I, I'll be back. And oh, like that was my, and I was coming back because I was doing some work, but that was kind of my fallback. Um, Amy, you're giving me flashbacks because it was three years ago, right around this time. I, I actually packed up the week before Halloween and I was on the road Halloween, but then this time I was packing up my father-in-law and he, he we're wired. We're packed. Don't pack. It's a very, um, you know, it's a process. Yeah. I think he's more the norm. He was overwhelmed with it. So he didn't do a lot of it. Like I thought there'd be a lot more done when I got there and it was like, Oh my gosh, we have a lot, you know, there's so much that can fit in the storage unit or not storage unit in his, um, moving van. And right. it's like, and he was in a house where he acquired small towns when they sold a house, they sold it with everything in it. So I had all of Mabel's things from 50 years ago. Right. Actually, that was not Mabel. Mabel was his mother, um, Agnes's things. And then Mabel, his mother's things, because when his mother passed away, he got his mom's stuff. Oh. And so then he had his stuff that he moved in that he had never touched. So, I mean, we had all of this stuff and I think he was so overwhelmed with it. He was paralyzed. And I remember getting there and it's like, wow. Cause I kind of told, I coached him on the same thing. Keep, don't keep. And then I thought I'll just keep it easy. And then we'll say, okay, the stuff that you're not going to keep, is it goodwill? Do you want to give it to someone? He actually did a pretty good job in what he wanted to give to people. Cause it gave him an excuse, you know, to go see them and give them things. Um, for me, when you talked about people, 
it was tough because I was overly optimistic in the number of people I could spend quality time with before I left when I was going through this very stressful thing of trying to pack my house, trying to figure out what would fit in the storage unit, how to get it there. And then, you know, I don't know about you, Amy, but I was some of my bigger pieces. I was selling on like Facebook marketplace and then I was coordinating people picking. It was just very chaotic. Yes. And it was hard to have good intentional time with people because I had stuff to do too. So are you dealing with that? Yes. Yes. And yes. Like this morning, somebody came and picked up the ping pong tables. Um, yesterday, somebody picked up something else they are, they bought. You know, it was it's just a constant. Um, we had a gathering Saturday night, which was lovely to have everybody coming together and getting to see people. But then, you know, some things were left behind. So I'm trying to figure out who this belongs to and this belongs to, cause I got to get it out of here before right. I leave. <laughs> so it's not like I have time. Um, so it's, that's a very, very, just a lot of upheaval. Um, one of the things you mentioned stressful and I found a survey and this was done in September of 2020. And it asked a thousand serve a thousand Americans who moved within the last three years about their experience and growing pains of moving. And one of the things, 45% of the respondents said moving is by far the most stressful event that they have ever experienced. I wow. Next in line for life's most stressful events was going through a breakup or divorce at 44%. Okay. I get that. Yeah. But I was like surprised move was more than that. You know, I I would tell you reflecting back and going through it, it was very therapeutic for me because I was able to look at things that I had held on to like memorabilia for the kids and truly it was long enough time period to know are is this stuff really important yeah. And I found that I saved a lot of stuff. Like I didn't even know which kid it was because they did, did the same exercise for the grade. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, they wouldn't want this. And I took pictures of certain things that they got a kick out of, but some things that I saved that I thought I needed to save and they weren't that important. Other things that were, I'm thinking, why didn't I get this out earlier? But I'll tell you, it was therapeutic to go through the past, to make those choices you know, trying to fit things in the, there's strategy in it, trying to fit things in the storage unit. What will I need again? I did a pretty mm -hmm. good job on that. You know, when we finally ultimately did have a house, but one thing that will, I, that was really, really good for me is I will never have stuff in a closet again, just sitting there. I yeah. think both Garrett and I, because we, we did a downsize and a move when we had a place in Denver, we've moved from people that didn't move much, moved a lot um, toward the end and moving his dad that we, there are no closets of stuff. You know, when I yeah. switch out and work on Christmas, I know I'll look at things and say, get rid of it. I, I Am I using it? I, I want to use everything I have. And back to your point, the pieces that I keep are going to be things that I really like and they're, they just weren't fillers. You know, there's a few things that I still look at and say, okay, that was a filler that I brought over. It'd be nice to replace that with something I really like, but yeah, it was kind of a cleansing, but it was a downsizing of self too, I think. Yeah. Yes, completely. And so that's kind of the, the leaving part of it, but then there's the arriving part of it. And that's that's kind of the sweet fun part mm -hmm. whereas the moving is uh it's a little bit more bitter because you just have to it's saying goodbye i just it's it's, it's a lot it's a lot it's, it's a lot but the moving is also a little overwhelming because like you know, the arriving at a new place so um i got my hair cut yesterday as you can see it's straight because yeah. she straightens it <laughs> and so um so finding a new hairdresser, like that's on my to-do list and, um, finding someone to groom my dog, finding 
Like there's this whole list of things that I now need to reestablish and then finding friends, finding my favorite place to have brunch, you know, finding just this whole world of discovery, which some of it's going to be fun, but some of it might be a little bit more stressful. Like the hairdresser piece is stressing me out. Not really. <laughs> It'll be fine. Good recommendations right away. I found like that when people are like, oh, here's who you need to go to. Here's some ideas. Yeah. Um, Health my hair is the toughest for me because you have to make sure your insurance covers, you oh. got your medical records. Um, healthcare was probably, and I'm in, I'm in a smaller area. You should be fine because you're Kansas yeah. city. I'm in a smaller area where people, doctors come here because they want to play, not because they want to work. So it's right. hard to get into doctors. Yeah. Yes. I could see that. Um, Yes. My hairdresser told me yesterday, she said, Amy, when you see somebody who's got great hair, just ask them where they go. And I was like, oh, that's a really good idea. Right. (laughs) And healthcare wise, I will tell you, we moved to Omaha when I was pregnant. I was seven months pregnant when we, we moved up here and um, I had to find a doctor like right away to deliver my baby. And what my doctor in Kansas city told me to do, she said, she goes, call a labor and delivery ward and ask them who you should go to. That's uh, my right. When I got my doctor, somebody told me, ask nurses that work in labor and delivery, who they recommend. That's how I got my doctor. I mean, it's great advice because they know who's good, who has good bedside manner. Exactly. Who, who's good to work with, who's good for the baby, the mom, like everything. Who was your doctor? Mine was Tom Martin. Who is yours? Oh, um, Dr. Bassett. Oh, nice. Craig Bassett. I yep. was trying to think of his first name, Craig Bassett. Really good reputation and mine. Yeah. But no, yeah. very, very, very happy and great recommendation. They right. are, I love the one about asking about someone who has good hair, um, where they get their hair cut. Right. Dogs go to a dog park and start talking to the other dog moms. Right. 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 And then making friends, you know, that's the other thing, um, which will be interesting. I was reading a tip on how to meet new friends in a new city. And I know you do a lot, um, to get yourself established in Durango. You've been doing a lot. One of them was volunteer in the community which you did that right away. And then join an amateur sports team, which I thought that was pretty funny. Hey, do pickleball. (laughs) We should, we could do a whole episode. I, I can't, you can't even get on a pickleball court here. It's very like, it's competitive. Even if I bring up, Oh, I want to do pickleball. No room. You know, it's Uh, because you can't get pickleball courts, but I wonder if I'm able to do Yeah. Um, I know my daughter in Kansas city plays kickball. Okay. But I have played kickball. And one time I played, we did a tournament and we had, you know, people in their forties and fifties playing. And I think somebody ended up on crutches because they pulled a hamstring. Like there was like all sorts of, I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to skip the kickball because they were so. <laughs> I remember when I did kickball, it was at Creighton Prep. It was some sort of a fundraiser. That was ours too. Yeah. I was so sore. I was so yeah. sore. I mean, because you are sprint running. I mean, and you are kicking and you're going after oh, the ball. Hard. Yeah. I, I was really sore and I was in pretty good shape at that time too. Yeah. Yes. We might have been at the same tournament. And that was when somebody pulled a hamstring and was on crutches for like three weeks. I was like, all right, I don't think this is a good idea. Um, join the chamber is a recommendation. Join a wine club, join a book club, which I am joining a book club. I've already signed up for one, join a sports team fan club, take your dog to the park. Have you ever met people at a park with your dog? I will not take my dog to the park here because he's kind of a little naughty thing. Oh. 
<laughs> our park is not completely fenced. It actually butts up to the mountains. And all it took was me taking him one time and he's running along the river and not wanting to come back to me. And somebody said, oh, my dog ran up in the mountains once. It took us a day to get him back. I'm like, mm, no. Mm -mm. Oh, <laughs> I, so I'm afraid he'll run for the hills. Yes, so, yes, but we yes. did in Boise. I would tell you, Amy, one thing, I don't know if they have this on the list, but I'd say join a gym or a yoga class because I've met a lot of people by classes or, you know, mm -hmm. Garrett volunteering, hiking, um, you know, golfing, things like that. People with similar yeah. interests. So that is like definitely a sport, but, but sometimes if you join a rec club, and then you find what classes you like, you'll find people that um, you meet that way too. Right. One of the things, our community that we're going to be living in, which I'm super excited, they do once a month painting. So you go and do those classes mm -hmm. where you all paint the same picture. I'm like, that's fun, you know, just to get to meet people. They have a book club, they have Wednesday night yoga. They had like, there's just activities all the time. So that'll be fun. Cause our neighbors are the other thing is get, knowing neighbors. And for me, it's not going to the dog parks, but walking my dog, I've met other owners. Cause we walk the dogs at the same time. Our dogs are friends. So through the dogs, kind of like back in the day, it was through our kids. Now it's through our dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. Very true. So what do you think um, is the biggest challenge in moving? I think embracing change, like continually reminding yourself that you got to make the change positive because it's not all positive. It's change. It's, it's a new hairdresser. It's a new route for the dog. It's people you don't know. I mean, there's a reason that there are sayings that say change is not easy, right? Yeah. And looking at anything as anything with change really is an opportunity. So trying to stay positive that even the things that are a pain in the ass and check the box, they're an opportunity for something new. Um, but yeah, cause there's, there's all kinds of things. It's how you organize your kitchen, where you get your groceries. I mean, there's, right. we are, we're creatures of habit, right? Yeah. And so even if you say I'm the most open-minded person in the world and I can't wait, everything is new. Yes. Everything's new. I had a friend, uh, talk to me on, Sunday. And she said something about this little adventure we're going on every way. All of our friends are calling it an adventure because we've been here for a while and yeah. we're doing something different than everybody else. And she was like, you know, I'm kind of impressed because a lot of times people our age after they've been somewhere for a while, they're just like, all right, I guess I'm just settling in. And this is where I'm going to be instead of thinking, okay, what else could I do? And and thinking that it's worth doing because sometimes you'll say, oh, I could do all this stuff, but it's a, it's a lot of work. Like it's, it's not like you can snap your finger and do it. You have to make a lot of decisions and there's a whole process. Like we've been doing this for months and we're moving next week. So it's kind of, uh, it's a lot of work. And willing to take on that work to try to, to do something different, um, it can be hard to do. So a lot of times we just stay where we're at, mm -hmm. which it's back to, it's, it's hard, you know, it, it is work and it is change and it's easy to kind of chicken out. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, I had, and you did too, because your mom has always been very open-minded to go to different places. I had my parents as an example that, I mean, they lived in the same small town, their parents, they were so ingrained in that small town, raised us there. And I think it took everyone aback when they said, you know, in 1986, we're moving at the time they were going to move to Vegas. And, yeah. you know, it, it, it's been an example for me. Cause then I look at how they, you know, they started out their lives and started from scratch and they kept some of the same routines and habits. It's just in a new place. And a lot of them, they gave up and tried new things, but um, yeah. 
I always remember too, you know, one thing at our age that I hear a lot about from people is, well, I have to move by my kids. I, you know, decisions are made around where their kids live or grandkids live, which, Mm -hmm. you know, I applaud, but then I think of my parents and they didn't go from the mindset of we can't live away from our kids. We're going to wait to see where our kids go, our grandkids go. And my kids have a great relationship with their grandparents. I'm very close to my parents and we were able to do that with not living next door to each other, even though what they knew was living by their parents, which was a great experience too. But we can have good, fulfilling lives and relationships and we don't have to be next door. Yes, I think that's, and you get to choose whatever is best for you. Maybe staying and being near family is more important or maybe doing something different. I remember one point my parents moved, um, down to Texas. And my dad was adamant that wherever they move, actually it was before Texas. It was when they moved to Colorado. It had to be a place where we would want to come visit. And so they, they found these places and it was fabulous. Like, it was like, okay, we're going to visit them. And this is going to be so great because it's not just a house. It was like an area we could in Colorado, we could go hiking, skiing and all that in Texas, there were horses. And like, it was just, a. both of them were wonderful experiences for my family. And I thought of that too. Now I'm like, okay, so I've chosen where I'm living now for my kids, for their school, for education, like, you know, creating mm-hmm. a space for that. Now it's like, okay, now we can choose something where it's fun for people to come visit. Right. And we can do whatever. And that's kind of like what you've done, Durango. You've gotten a great place where people like to come visit. Yeah. To come in. But in, at the end of the day, a relationship is what how you build it, regardless yeah. of where you live. I mean, Garrett and I were together for, for our first nine, 10 years that we didn't even live in the same city all the time. And, you know, it is what it is. And and I I actually seen a lot of um post quotes about how to deal with family that don't treat you well and blah, blah, blah. I mean, you can live by each other and still not have a good relationship because you're not making the most, you know, for, for a lot of different reasons. How about that? Not place, okay. but a relationship is what you make of it, regardless of where you live. Right. Exactly. And how you build that relationship. And I guess that my parents taught me that we don't I saw it both ways. They lived right by their parents and they had great relationships with their parents. And my dad will fondly talk about how lucky we were that we were raised in a small town with that community and our grandparents, but in the same light, they weren't by my kids. And that was great too. It was just a different, it was a different type of relationship. Yeah. One of my girlfriends said to me, she's like, you know, probably I'll see you just as much when you're in Kansas city, as I do now, because the reality is we don't see each other face to face a lot, right. but we see each other like every other month or, you know, so it feels like a lot because we're close, we're in proximity, but we'll probably see each other just as much. <laughs> right. Right. So, maybe a little less, but it's not like it's going to be crazy less. It's not like it's someone I see every day. So So Amy, did anything, has anything shocked you? You weren't expecting uh, harder than you thought. I mean, any, any negatives that you weren't expecting? Um, I, I will say the, the people that I didn't, I think I took some people for granted. I, I will say that it made me realize that there were people around me. It's made me realize just in this moment, there are people around me that have always been there. And I admire, we don't, it's been hard saying goodbye to the people that I didn't recognize as important people in my life. And now as I'm saying goodbye, I think that's probably a better way to say it. As I'm saying goodbye, I'm realizing how important and what an impact they've made on me. And and I'm going to miss stuff like that. And that's, it's the people I'll say the people. <laughs> this is where as much as uh, we can complain about social media, there are means, whether whatever platform it is 
to keep in contact too. Not that yeah. that replaces it, but at least you're up to date. You know, it's funny the yeah. two gals that I went to soak with, it was actually an Omaha friend that came to visit and had relatives and we all had gone together and mm-hmm. they said, next time we come all So we, we've kept the friendship here without her. And it was funny. Cause you know, I'm like, Oh, how was your grandson's birthday party? Okay. Yeah. That holiday Mart. Like just these little things that we didn't really miss too much of a beat. At least we kind of kept up in what each was doing. Right. So again, there are pros and cons, but it, it, uh, I am keeping in much better touch with classmates, with people I knew before previous moves now than I would have back then um, because of, you know, phone, some group texts, social right. media, um, right. there are means. I'll have to make, be more intentional about posting on social media. One of the things I had a challenge with was um, I will say, I have a friend who's going through a hard time right now and wanting to celebrate my like excitement of leaving, like going to Kansas city, not leaving here, but going to arriving there is more of the excitement and balancing that with this hard time. This other person is going through it. it, That's been probably a challenge of, um, which I think a lot of people encounter that of they have something exciting happening in their life and there's something right. not as happy happening with somebody else. And you're trying to be there for that person, but the, the focus is also on you in that moment. And of that's, that's been a hard balance for a couple of my relationships where people are going through harder things. Right. Do you just, you know, again, if it's a, in your case, it is a genuine relationship. You kind of figure it out together, right? You do, you do. And it's hard. It's just, you know, again, it's just one of those things. It's those things that we ponder and we hope that we're being supportive enough and also like feel a little bad saying, oh, yay, I'm doing this. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) You know, so anyway. What the... you know, we were talking about house and home last time. And I've talked mm-hmm. before about how I get attachments to houses. Is there any attachment to your house, you or the kids that it's going to be hard to leave? Or is it just a house? It, it was a home. The memories stay. I mean, how are you guys with the house versus home and the move? Um, Pretty good. Like we've only been in this house four and a half years, but that's such a good question because I do love this house. Um, it has been somebody else asked me that Saturday and I said, this has been my favorite house to live in because it feels so open and welcoming to people like everybody, like there's space to gather. And so I've loved that. Um, and I love the backyard. Like there's so many good things about this house. So this is my favorite house. I'm going to miss it. Um, but I will say I know what I'm looking for in a future place. Mm -hmm. So that's helpful because I know that spark that's in this house. I want to make sure we capture something similar to that in a new space. And what's your timeline for finding a new house? Do you have a timeline or is it kind of one day at a time, one month at a time? We're going to see, we've got a year lease and the apartment. So it's at least a year, but we may not buy a house. We may buy a condo. We we're kind of keeping it open just mm-hmm. to see what we think of living in the city. Um, we've even talked about possibly buying a lake house and just keeping an apartment or I don't know. We'll see. It's nice. I would tell you one recommendation I would make is it's nice not having to just buy that second house. You know, when you have kids and school systems, you need to do that, but yeah. it really was helpful for us to do Airbnb living to do monthly rentals because it took a while to say what we wanted, what we didn't want. And it helped us figure it out. Now we kind of got sick of, you know, we had within a year and a half, we had three different places and you still have stuff to move, you know, even though we had a lot in storage and I got sick of, I worried about things in storage, you know, certain things, you know, there's just this worry, you know, or I mentally try to place everything I have in storage with different things. So (laughs) But it was nice having that time to kind of explore all the possibilities of what we wanted and where. Yes. 
Yes. I think it'll be fun. It's going to be an adventure. I think every time we've moved, things have always gotten better. Um, when we moved to Omaha, it got better because we focused on family time. That is the whole reason we had moved up here. And then between all of the houses we moved, there was something intentional about each house that made something better. And so, um, I think this will be good too. It'll be all good. Were you three houses in Omaha? I can think we, of two. Three. We had the one, the first one in Chicago circle, mm -hmm. then we were over by Wentz and then this one. That one. Okay. Yeah. So that's three. And then, uh, yeah, that's good. That's all good. All right. Well, so the real and the ideal, let's kind of wrap it up with that. The real of this situation is, um, it's good. This can be hard, um, but if you're, I think as with anything, if you have the right intentions and the right, if you're moving for the right reasons, um, it's all going to work out. Mm -hmm. I like that. And I think too, the real is it can sound like no matter how great the adventure, the excitement, there's always work that goes with it. Yes. You don't magically snap your fingers and it's there and things go wrong. <laughs> and, <Right. laughs> and... I think that's a really good point. Like if we could snap our fingers, boy, wouldn't that be great? And, you know, one thing I'll say with the ideal flipping to the ideal is the ideal is just chilling out and saying, you know, take it as it comes, be as intentional as you can be, but don't sweat the small stuff, yeah. see who you can. And if you, if they're, if they really are good friends, which I'm sure they are, but what I learned is they, they got it. They understood if there was somebody I was going to lunch with that. It's like, this is not going to work. I'm stressed out that they'd say, that's fine. You know, call me on the way we'll do yeah. a virtual. I'll see you the next time. But it's the, the best laid plans never are exactly following the roadmap that you put together. They're, they're always going to deviate a little bit. Right. 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 And having that flexibility is the ideal of mm -hmm. just being like, let's roll with the punches and let's just keep going and we'll get there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good. Yeah. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> next time you will be moved, right? Next yes. time. Yes. Next, next time we talk, we will be all moved and settled in. So you'll get to see my new place. And yeah, if I have Wi-Fi, I will be in the apartment. Yay. <laughs> Yay. All right. All right. Thanks. Good Tiffany. luck. Thank you. Okay, talk we'll to you talk later. soon. Bye.